there is an illegal, outrageous, unconstitutional, and frankly criminal aspect of the government and corporations that are running these projects without the supervision and approval of the president or the Congress or of we the people. You're talking about I, a breakaway rogue civilization. Here's the problem with the presidency. And I've done a, put a briefing together for every president since Clinton when I was a young medical doctor. And what I have found is that a bubble gets put around them by the national security apparatus. Exactly. And they deceive the president, and then they manipulate them. The word globalist you know, can be used in a lot of ways. What it really is is transnational. So let me define that for people. Everyone thinks of international. So you have the U.S. border, and you have Canada, and, and Great Britain, and Russia, and China. That actually is a, the Truman Show. That's what they want people to think is operational. What's actually operational is a transnational elite that run these projects that they don't really give, frankly, a rat's ass, excuse my, my language, about whether it's American, Chinese, or anything else. They're only interested in the power and the concentration of enormous amounts of power and with that wealth. As a medical doctor, one of my big concerns is that this pandemic is being managed in a way that maximizes uh, deaths. And what do I mean by that? Uh, not only some of the medical uh, advice has happened, uh, it, there's some question whether even ventilators are as, as productive as, as they were initially thought, but it was greatly exaggerated in terms of its lethality. That has caused people not to come to the ER with heart attacks, strokes, pulmonary emboli, all kinds of problems. So there's this spike in deaths unrelated to COVID, uh, which is going to exceed the number of deaths from COVID. That's number one. Number two, about 874,000 people die every year in America from uh, poverty. We are going to triple or quadruple the poverty rate. Those deaths alone are going to outstrip COVID. In the next hour, I'm going to go to him in this segment, Dr. Stephen Greer, who doesn't need any introduction from documentaries, TV shows, films, Coast to Coast AM, Art Bell, George Norrie, he doesn't need any introduction. Medical doctor that worked in secret black projects. Yeah, he's on the show. He's got the number one documentary right now on all platforms, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. We'll talk to him in a moment. Let me just throw this out because in the real world, people don't listen to commercials on radio and TV. They listen to what's live on air. And if I don't do this, we won't be here in six months. We sell products, we sell books, films, t-shirts, water filtration, air filtration, good products. That's how we built our own independent system. And the establishment is trying to shut us down, you know that. But these are great products to begin with. So it's a win-win for you and to keep the show on the air. We have six days left, the biggest sale yet this year. We will have a sale this big in November, early December. Our Christmas sale will be this big. But this is the biggest sale yet this year, 30 to 60% off on all of our high quality products. And some of these products, like eight pack power stack, that's amazing. We make like $10 on it at this price. So we're selling this at cost. And a lot of that's because we over ordered some at the end of the year last year and have a little bit of excess product. So InfoWarsStore.com, ultimate krill oil, so good for you. It's the highest grade krill oil. That's 50% off. Survival Sealed X2 back in stock, 50% off. Uh, it's all there at InfoWarsStore.com, DNA Force Plus, back in stock, 50% off. So please support us. Now, I've been listening to Dr. Stephen Greer for 20 years, and I've read a couple of his books, and I've followed what he has to say. And I never got into UFOs and all of this because I knew a lot of it was real, but I couldn't get people to admit there were FEMA camps and, and shadow government and the CFR and, a world, and, and, and all of this. But the public now is ready for this. And, and, and so he, he'll be with us the whole next hour and hopefully come back again for a couple hours next week. And so he's on with us, drstephengreer.com. And he wants to get into his new film and what's happening with COVID-19 and so much, you know, as a medical doctor here today. But I wanted to air something from many years ago in, in a film he was involved in, uh, dealing with the fake alien invasion. Because Project Blue Beam has been partially declassified. They admit that a fake alien invasion and holograms in the sky is something the CIA and Pentagon really looked at. And so let's go ahead and start before we introduce him with a few minutes uh, from that film where he broke this down. 
November 12th of 1988 was their dog and pony show, a classified military exhibit at Norton Air Force Base. And then off in a separate section of the hangar behind a curtain, which was opened up once everyone had gathered, were three of these so-called alien reproduction vehicles, or ARVs. The craft itself was hovering off the floor with no landing gear underneath it, nothing supporting it from above. To see something, uh, you know, travel across 12 miles of airspace in under a second and a half, make a couple of right angle turns and not make a supersonic shock wave of any kind, no sonic boom, which I've personally witnessed on a number of occasions. I mean, it's just, it changes your whole perspective. There are people who've had uh, experiences with the technology that we're not able to handle it psychologically because it just it defies reality. And in this document, the CIA director, Walter Smith, says, I am today transmitting to the National Security Council a proposal in which it is concluded that the problems connected with unidentified flying objects appear to have implications for psychological warfare as well as for intelligence and operations. We have to take a step back from all the jargon and all the paranoia in Star Wars movies for just a minute and realize that it's very easy to set up a false flag operation. A false flag operation, also known as a false indication and warning, is a military tactic in which you create the illusion of a threat, often by attacking yourself and blaming the desired enemy. It's proven extremely effective at uniting the public around a perceived threat. Have you been exposed or did you come across in, in your career and your network um, the, the, the false INW or, or the deceptive indication and warnings projects related to this? Yes. They could pull it off. They could definitely pull it off. Right now, they have the technology to mimic the form, fit, and function of extraterrestrial UFOs. They have the technology, absolutely. It's seamless, and you could never know the difference. So if they wanted to hoax an alien invasion, they could do it, and they could do it in a way that's 100% believable. They started doing all kinds of psychological warfare entrainment of the public by staging hoaxed events, such as cattle mutilations. Oh, it's a flying saucer who did that. It's a covert paramilitary program, human. So if you wanted to start indoctrinating people into a false threat from outer space that Werner von Braun warned us about, you would start staging events that look alien, but that are completely man-made, that are scary, and scare the hell out of people. Inner stage left, you got these uh, sort of anti-gravity devices with creatures that look like ETs that are actually man-made robotic systems. All right, that's from Unacknowledged 2017, three years ago, and now it's on Fox News. They're showing cockpit footage. I remember like eight years ago, I was in Montana, and I'm sitting out there at night, clear sky, and these are up at satellite level, and they're doing 180-degree turns at thousands of miles an hour. So we know this is going on. The question is, what's the bigger agenda? Dr. Stephen Greer is here with us. He has courage coming on the show because obviously anybody that comes on is demonized. DrStephenGreer.com. Thank you for joining us, sir. We go to break in about four minutes. I wanted to air that before we get to the next trailer for your film that's number one across all platforms, uh, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Congratulations. But I know you particularly wanted to come on about COVID-19 and, and just everything we're facing. So thanks for joining us, doctor. Happy to be here. Well, one of the things people need to understand, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion about uh, the, the deep state in, in our society now. And what people don't understand is uh, what people are calling the deep state, the proper term is an unacknowledged special access project. Now, I've dealt with these since uh, for the last 30 years. And uh, as many of your listeners may know, uh, I, I'm an emergency doctor, got dragged into this through a number of things we don't have time to go into, uh, and began to brief people like the director of the CIA, the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, members of the Senate Intelligence Committee on this problem. And what I discovered very quickly is that there is an illegal, outrageous, unconstitutional, and frankly criminal aspect of the government and corporations that are running these projects without the supervision and approval of the president or the Congress or of we the people. You're talking about I, a breakaway rogue civilization. 
Well, it's a breakaway rogue, very tightly controlled uh, operation that it, that doesn't fit the normal stereotypes of what most people think of in terms of this kind of of operation. In other words, I would say that out of a thousand people, even in the military, if I were to, if you were to go to them and say there are operations dealing with UFOs that are so tightly compartmented that your boss, who is a four-star general, is denied access to them, they would think that you'd lost your mind. But that's what we discovered. And now I have about 985 whistleblowers, top secret, corporate, and CIA and Pentagon folks on my team who are providing us with information and documents about no, this. No, I agree so, with you. And, and, and I know you're not defending Trump or pro-Trump, but is it, from what I've seen, Trump's trying to decompartmentalize that, at least on the surface, it looks like yes. that. Yes, well, the, here's the problem with the presidency. And I've done a, put a briefing together for every president since Clinton when I was a young medical doctor. And what I have found is that a bubble gets put around them by the national security apparatus. Exactly. And they deceive the president, and then they manipulate them. I mean, here's a quick course in this for your listeners. Uh, George W. Bush had 9-11 which was a completely a contrived situation. And that caused his presidency to go off the rails and we invaded Iraq. So they always Trump. create a crisis to take control of the presidency. Correct. And then the ne next one, of course, was the financial crisis. The gang banksters, the big banking people came in and held a gun to Obama's 2008, head. 2008, 2009. Yeah, 2008, 9, 10. And then you say print up trillions of dollars in fake money and bail out the big banks. Meanwhile, average people lost their homes. Now we have the coronavirus, which is the, like the president has seen a ghost here. And they said, we're gonna dump 2 million dead bodies on your doorstep if you don't do the following. And so a whole bunch of policies have gone out. But all of this, this is the key point I wanna make, all of this is basically a dress rehearsal for what's coming. And people need to wake up. I agree with you. So you'll have the floor, sir. We'll have about 50 minutes of air time when we come back with breaks and cut into that. Dr. Stephen Greer is our guest. And uh, <laughs> this is going to be one hell of a transmission straight ahead because whether you want to believe in UFOs or not, the globalists believe they're getting off-world or interdimensional communications. And I'm just going to leave it at that. We'll be right back in T-minus two minutes. Tell everybody you know, tune in now. All right, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Dr. Stephen Greer, famous medical doctor, best-selling author, has the number one film out right now, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. We'll talk about that at the bottom of the hour. Take over, my friend. What are we facing? What's happening? And I want to I get into the end game coming up, but please continue. Well, the, the, the whole problem is that, you know, Werner Von Braun back in the 70s on his deathbed told a member of my team that there was a long-term agenda to hoax a threat from outer space so that sort of the uber global elite who are really fascists wanted to take over the planet and unite humanity, not in love and peace or spiritual development or anything nice, but around a fearsome uh, sort of police state conditions and that they would go through a number of protocols to do that. First, there would be uh, of course, the Cold War, which they would wind down, replace it with global terrorism and then global financial chaos. And then the big one, which is the one that they're working on most, uh, that's been very covert in these unacknowledged special access projects, is this hoaxed alien threat. Now, I want to clarify the word alien is a very poor choice of words, frankly. There's a number of things going on that are dumped into that category. Uh, there are extraterrestrial biological life forms that have bodies, spacecraft from other star systems. There are things from other dimensions that are not ET, but that present as alien. And then there's all the hoax stuff that your clip earlier was showing. And, you know, we have a man who's Air Force Intelligence, also Special Investigations, who is uh, on our show, and it's in this new film, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, where he absolutely states, without a question, that covert programs have hoaxed alien encounters, made to look like abductions and what have you, for their psychological warfare value, but also 
which is interesting, to cover up other events that people have witnessed. For example, one of these was a person, a group of people who saw a classified anti-gravity man-made, a human uh, object that's uh, like a small disc lift off from a, a facility, an Air Force facility in Washington State. They should not have seen that. They sent out a team of people who abducted these poor innocent people and basically tortured them and gave them the whole full-on alien abduction experience. Now, this sounds like something like a bad example out of the X-Files. Sure, they're creating this a backstory to cover up what's really going on to make it fantastical. But Correct. we know that, like they've used holograms and things to like create fake, you know, UFOs to then cover up what's really going on. Yeah, and, and that's about 80% of what people see. Now, you know, the Pentagon last, a couple weeks ago, re-released the footage of the gun camera uh, footage chasing a UFO off the coast of California. Well, we knew that was going to be released, uh, and it was two and a half years ago initially, by a team of disinformation masters out of the Pentagon and CIA, and I know who they are. I've known them for 30 years. And the narrative that they attach to that footage, which is the key point here, is that it's a national security threat. They're invading our, our airspace, et cetera, and so on. Well, there's a very high likelihood that that particular footage was one of our Lockheed Martin Skunk Works highly classified aircraft that they put up and the, those, those brave guys chasing it in, in this uh, Navy jet fighter. My dad was World War II Navy. Um, had no idea it was it could have been one of ours. There it is. You're showing it now. So that footage, of course, went wide. It was on CNN. But you notice that there was a narrative attached to it. And this is the key part where it was presented multiple times as a national security threat. I think people better realize that if you think 9-11 was bad or the coronavirus situation is bad, what they're planning to do with this is an order of magnitude worse you've been I've saying it for 20 plus years that project blue beam is the ultimate hoax and now we're seeing it we're even talking about viruses from mars about to kill us we'll cover when we come back in 60 seconds with dr stephen greer dr stephen greer medical doctor expert on off-world activities brought up the fact they keep presidents in bubbles using crises and i remember three years ago, getting death threats and other incredible things that happened. Uh, offers of massive amounts of money, you name it. And they just said, listen, stop talking to Trump and stop telling him about the deep state. And I was like, okay, I'm a talk show host. I had Trump on some. I'm not that important. It's not that I was that important. Everyone else in the corporate and military world knew you don't talk to the president. You let the establishment do that and so we can put the headlines up washington post media matters all of it general kelly's main job was keeping alex jones away from president trump because i'd say sir fiona hill she's a bilderberg group she works for soros he would it, it's in 60 minutes last month that i did that they're like he called up the president and said fiona hill was a globalist hell she runs the website globalist.com but the point is, it's not that I'm powerful. It's that the emperor's new clothes. No one will call it out because they come after you if you do. So Stephen Greer was bringing that up. DrStephenGreer.com, medical doctor who worked in black projects. Uh, please continue, sir, with what you're saying. If you think COVID's a big hoax, if you think all this is a big hoax, wait till the big hoax, Project Bluebeam. Maybe you should tell folks about what's admitted about secret government projects to, to hoax an alien invasion? Well, it involves a, a whole array of very sophisticated technologies where they could make people think that we're under some kind of attack that is actually being orchestrated by people trying to seize power, uh, not just in the United States, but around the world. Remember, the name of the game is global power and control. And a lot of things that have happened over the last... the 20 years since 9-11 have been a sort of beta testing of how the public would react. And also, importantly, since your show is called InfoWars, 
how the media will. Now, you know, one of the people that we have on, on, on our new film, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, is a man who worked with the New York Times on the Pentagon Papers who saw this Project Mockingbird document that listed 42 people who were major editors in, in the big mainstream media that were on the payroll of the CIA. Number one, that's illegal for the CIA to do that uh, by law and, and it, its mandate uh, to do anything domestic. But number two, uh, it means that what people think they are getting in the media as sort of the pure truth is never the case. It's actually the scripted line, the party line, that these folks want you to hear. And that's become uh, more clear now than ever. Yes, absolutely. It's completely clear. And anyone who says otherwise is frankly banned. So, you know, you mentioned, you know, being offered a lot of money years ago. People can't believe this, but in 1992, the head of Army Intelligence personally offered me $2 billion if I would shut up and not do what I was doing because they knew that we could make a lot of trouble. My, my uncle helped design the lunar module, put the first man on the moon, the north of Grumman. So, you know, we knew about a lot of projects and I had a lot of contacts with folks who had firsthand knowledge who were, you know, these weren't the, the UFO crazies. These were generals and aerospace engineers with Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, CIA folks. And, you know, they were coming to me saying, look, you know, we have a huge problem here. And uh, so they offered me $2 billion. And then he went behind my back to my wife, tried to convince her. And I finally said, look, I'm not for sale. And then here they come, every kind of defamation, of my character, I they literally put out that I wasn't a doctor. I had to send out to the public my license and and literally my medical degree because people henchmen for the the, the deep state, as you call it, were going out there defaming me like that. So you know, if, if your listeners think that this stuff doesn't happen to people who blow the whistle on this level of criminal, yeah, I'm embarrassed. I was only offered ten million. But I get it. Well, they give engineers and people the chance to run projects is the point. Yes. You know, one of the members of this uh, this committee that, that deals with is called the Majority Intelligence Committee or MAGIC that deals with this subject, M-A-J-I-C, uh, told me in 1993, right before I briefed the CIA director, he said, look, we have given over 10,000 people at least $10 million and more in black budget money to secure their cooperation with You're talking about individually, yeah. Yes. It's massive. People have no idea. Right. And so that's when you look at what their capability. Now, here's the other problem. Whatever you think these classified projects have in terms of technologies, you're probably thinking 20 generations ago. So the technologies that exist are fearsome. In terms of is that what event. creates the arrogance in Silicon? So, so uh, let, let's cut right to the chase. You can get into whatever you want, Dr. Greer. Obviously, this is an anti-human agenda. They admit it's a post-human agenda now. They're externalizing the method. Silicon Valley obviously didn't just come up with this on their own. It's a very anti-human uh, agenda. Uh, who's behind it? Who are they? What is this? Well, there's a committee of, of folks, and everyone thinks it's... Uh, uh, the word globalist, you know, can be used in a lot of ways. What it really is, is transnational. So let me define that for people. Everyone thinks of international. So you have the U.S. border and you have Canada and, and Great Britain and Russia and China. That actually is a, the Truman Show. That's what they want people to think is operational. What's actually operational is a transnational elite that run these projects that they don't really give, frankly, a rat's ass, excuse my, my language, about whether it's American, Chinese, or anything else. They're only interested in the power and the concentration of enormous amounts of power and with that wealth. So, for example, we're still using fossil fuels and centralized electric grids when the technologies to replace that have been around for about 100 years. Now, I'm going to give you a date that's going to curl your, your hair, and that is... October 1954. That's the date a man on my team who is the top scientist at the Naval Research Labs, the largest Department of Defense lab, his name is Rick Bosch. He's passed away from prostate cancer, so I can mention his name. He was in the vault and saw a document that literally dated 
October 1954 when we mastered gravity control, what the public would call anti-gravity. So we have not needed a rocket or a jet aircraft since October 1954. Well, I mean, my dad was just top of his class in Plan 2 in high school, already in college, and this was low-level stuff. He said they had CD-ROMs, computers. When I was like a kid, he said, oh, they'll have these computers and it'll call the Internet. And he wasn't even, even near anything that was establishment. He was on the edge of it. They already had computers in the 60s. I mean, it's just, exactly. It's like he said, the future is not evenly distributed. That's right. And, and one of the problems is that we have a whole, uh, multiple generations that have lived up in a, in a society where we have been miseducated, diseducated. Yeah, so we're like the cavemen that they just give things when they want. They, right. just, they just give us little things with Trojan horses. Well, and even the media, you know, uh, Bob Schwartz, you may have heard that name. He was on the board of Time Life. It became AOL Time Warner. I was with him in New York in the 90s. And he says, you know, older gentleman, he says, look, Dr. Greer, we, the media, have become basically scribes taking dictation at the right hand of the king, referring to these covert programs and large transnational corporations. And he says, you really can't report the truth on much of this. And he talked about how he was good friends with Mike Wallace at 60 Minutes and had given him a document that listed some of the people involved in the UFO cover-up and these top secret programs that are unacknowledged special access projects, the super deep black ones that people refer to. And that's the proper name is a USAP. And he said, Basically, 60 Minutes uh, executives told Mike Wallace, their star alleged investigative reporter, you can't do this story. Now, this was from the mouth of Mike Wallace's friend, Bob Schwartz, to my ears, and that man was on the board of Time Life. At the no, time. I believe you. I remember growing up as a kid hearing about DMT and all the stuff they were doing, and now it's all over the news with Joe Rogan. We'll be right back with Dr. Stephen Greer. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Tell folks tune in right now. I'm Alex Jones. I am your host. Look at these articles that are on Infowars.com right now. Leaked study from inside German government warns lockdown could kill more people than coronavirus. Fauci claims number of U.S. coronavirus deaths actually higher than official toll. So that's doubling down as it comes out. They're adding all the people that die of other stuff to the coronavirus number. He keeps boosting it because he works for the dark side. Washington State requires restaurants to collect personal info on diners for contact tracing. They're just getting us ready for the control. Now, Dr. Stephen Greer is here with us. He's got a documentary that's number one across all major platforms right now. His website's drstephengreer.com. We'll get in the next segment into his Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. But as he said earlier, I just go off what I can prove. And I've not seen Papa Smurf. I've not seen a leprechaun. But I have gotten involved in high-level Hollywood and other things, and they really believe at Skull and Bones in New Haven, Connecticut, or in some Hollywood event, that they are interfacing with interdimensional beings that are giving them advanced knowledge. And you can roll your eyes at that until you realize that Thomas Malthus and Francis Galton and all these guys that envision modern science believe they got it from gods and goddesses. They believe from outside entities. So was that a way for them to have confidence to plumb their incredible mind, or was it real? It doesn't matter because it's manifesting. So this is a short segment, long segment coming up with Dr. Greer, but you've got a lot to cover, and I want you to have the floor here, sir. But let me just ask you from, you know, you are a medical doctor. You did work in black projects. That's not denied. I get a good feeling talking to you. You know, you come off as credible. I've been listening to you 20 years. And it feels like now is the time to expose this, but we are on a planet two-thirds of the way out of the spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Obviously, we're not alone. From your deep research, who are the players versus the BS? Who gave us the advanced technology that crashed here? Was it you know, obviously Promethean fire on purpose? I mean, what's really going on? What's really going on is that the dominant narrative on the subject has to do with what you refer to as interdimensional beings as opposed to extraterrestrial beings. And those have been conflated and confused. For example, when I was, you know, I had a great discussion with Monsignor Balducci at the Vatican back in the 90s, who was the chief theologian and demonologist for Pope John Paul. And he says, look, 
angels, neither angels nor demons need flying saucers. It was a very succinct way of putting this. So what has happened is that, yes, there are people who have had experiences with things from other dimensions, other spirit worlds, other conscious entities from other dimensions. There are extraterrestrial life forms that people confuse with those because if you're going from one star system to another at multiples of the speed of light, which is the only way you can do it, you are crossing through those dimensions. So I use the term transdimensional interstellar civilizations. These are interstellar that have reached technological capabilities, but in order to go from point A to B, they're going through these other dimensions. But that's why there's an enormous amount of confusion, which the intelligence community and disinformation specialists have exploited. So people are that's now right. For thinking, folks that don't know, you don't need to travel a trillion miles. It's interdimensional fold space, which again, right. the occult knows. Frank Herbert knew that. So from your deep research, where is the establishment getting the advanced technology? Is it is it transmitted through the ether or is it actually physically crashing? Well, they have they don't physically crash. You don't go through uh, you know light years of space and then can't navigate an electrical storm in New Mexico. Uh, so everyone's heard of the famous it's cliche Roswell event that actually did happen. It was a uh, early electromagnetic weapon that we had in a radar dome that was fired. And I have an FBI document from a field agent to. By Jay the way, Luke. my grandmother who died two years ago. My, my grandfather worked for a major oil company. They lived in Roswell. She saw the 18-wheeler with something under it there in town that next morning. And she doesn't know if it right. was. She just knew that there was Army was there. There was stuff they were taking out of there. Yeah, not a weather balloon, my friend. And so what happened is that a technology transfer program happened. Sure, so between, get back to this dome. I, I mean, I mean this, this weapon, what happened? Well, they fired this electromagnetic weapon, which is the type of uh, very high-tech, uh, weapon. It was in 1947. It was early and they were experimenting with it. It caused these three ET craft to lose their guidance system. Two, they collided. Two went down near Roswell uh, and one wasn't found until 1951 up in the northern New Mexico desert, far away. Now, I have multiple people on my team who've seen the documentation of this, who worked those projects. That it potentiated research that Adolf Hitler had been doing on high voltage systems that cause lifters or electromagnetic lift, uh, so-called anti-gravity. And, and so projects that were being uh, experimented on all the way back to the 20s, 30s, and 40s got greatly potentiated because they got a cache of uh, interstellar technologies, but it's a bit like giving a calculator to a caveman. Uh, back then. They had a, to do a lot of work to figure out even what these things did. Uh, they found a lot of objects. Did that piss anybody but, off that we fried a bunch of these things? Uh, well, luckily, these civilizations are so advanced socially and spiritually that they are not violent. They're very concerned about us uh, and the fact that we're on the verge of destroying humanity and this planet and what that portends for us going into space, frankly. But Obviously, and this is a conversation I've had at the Pentagon a number of times, if these civilizations were hostile towards us, we would know it, my friend. It would be point, set, match, over, because you're talking about us doing crazy things, targeting these objects and downing them for decades, and they have technologies that are orders of magnitude beyond what we have or could even dream about. So are these so, biological robots they're sending in, though? Uh, there are two types. Some are actually what you're describing. Some are actually the uh, native life forms. And uh, I know a, a man who was at Fort Huachuca, which is Army Intelligence Headquarters, was on my team, who was in an underground facility there where there were nine different ET crafts stored and where the bodies had been autopsied. And those were native uh, extraterrestrial life forms. So to get back to your question, that technology began to be studied very heavily. And as you know, Colonel Corso wrote the book The Day After Roswell because he had been involved in this technology transfer uh, project in, in the 50s. 
And, uh, you know, by listen, I can listen to you. I can listen to whoever. My grandmother wasn't a liar. And she said there was an 18 wheeler with army troops guarding it with something under well, it. What was under it? What was under it was a disc, a domed disc that was uh, seamless. Well, one of them got blown to smithereens. The another one was kind of fractured. Um, and interestingly, it had a type of bio nanotechnology where the skin of the craft was trying to heal itself. Like when you saw a time lapse of someone's cut healing, the tech, the, the, these technologies that are interstellar are extraordinarily sophisticated. Um, I liken them to a bio nano machine. They're, they're, they're well, we're sure lucky that when we kill them, they don't get mad. That That is it. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, if, if they were the type of, if they were violent uh, and, and oriented that way, it would have been all over but the shouting, my friend. But, uh, you know, obviously, te these, these civilizations have evolved not only spiritually and socially, but technologically. Sure, and they I think wouldn't have this technology and not blow themselves up if they hadn't gotten past violence. We'll be right back it, then and talk about the big picture and alien invasion, stage alien invasion, Project Bluebeam. Welcome back. Dr. Stephen Greer is our guest. All right, we got two segments left with Dr. Stephen Greer, who I really hope will join us again for two or three hours, maybe do a commercial-free podcast, we air clips on the show. We're geared towards radio and TV. But we're still on air despite all the censorship. So I've asked a lot of questions here, but I'll be honest. My grandmother died at like 92, three years ago, and she was about 80, and we went out to Sedona, Mexico, in a uh, New Mexico, in, a, in an RV, and we, we'd been there about a week and a half. We came back, and we stopped in Roswell at a Denny's, and I was saying, oh, that made-up stuff about a UFO, a bunch of BS. She went, oh, really? When it happened, your grandfather, Bill, who just died, worked at the petroleum building right there, it's the only big building in Roswell, you know, modern looking building, but built in the forties. And I worked right over here. And, you know, my uncle who just died a few years ago, he was a little baby. My mom wasn't born then. She was born in 1950. And she described this to me. And so I was like, well, that has some credibility. Cause I mean, that's grandma telling you, that's not Stephen Greer telling you. So Stephen moving past that in the two segments we have about 20 minutes left, you've got the floor. What else do you want to impart to people about COVID-19 project blue beam, the whole nine yards, because this audience is ready to hear it. Well, what, as, a, as a medical doctor, one of my big concerns is that this pandemic is being managed in a way that maximizes uh, deaths. And what do I mean by that? Uh, not only some of the medical uh, advice has happened, uh, there's some question whether even ventilators are as, as productive as, as they were initially thought, but it was greatly exaggerated in terms of its lethality. That has caused people not to come to the ER with heart attacks, strokes, pulmonary emboli, all kinds of problems. So there's this spike in deaths unrelated to COVID, uh, which is going to exceed the number of deaths from COVID. That's number one. Number two, about 874,000 people die every year in America from uh, poverty. We are going to triple or quadruple the poverty rate. Those deaths alone are going to outstrip COVID. So we need to find a smart way to do this, uh, where we do not shut down all of civilization and turn our country into a police state. Because if we burn down the entire uh, country that way, it's like burning down a, a barn to get rid of the rats. We're going to lose more people from other causes than COVID. Now, and I am obviously not the establishment knows it. So I, I get you say it's humans posing as off world, but where's the off world nexus? Who's got the anti impetus? Who are the bad guys? The bad guys are a group of sociopaths and psychopaths that have seized amazing amounts of power in the post World War II era. And what what these what Hitler couldn't do overtly with the Third Reich. These guys are trying to do covertly with what I call the Fourth Reich. Exactly. And, and that is, it, it is just that simple, frankly. Uh, I didn't believe it as a young doctor when I started encountering it. By the way, I have met with a number of these people. I was about to say, how did you get, because they tried to recruit my dad as well. What makes yeah. them try to recruit you? Because, well, I mean, maybe one out, of, one out of 10 million or what, 50 million, I mean, what number do they, it's a very small number. How do they, rec why do they recruit somebody and not? Well, I, I don't know. I believe in my case, they thought I could be a lot of trouble. 
uh, down the road. And, and ultimately, I had three people on my team assassinated, including a former director of the CIA, Bill Colby, who was CIA director for uh, Ford and Nixon. And he was going to hand off to us one of these. Yeah, kayak, uh, kayak accident. Oh, yeah, allegedly. Now, the week that happened, what you may not know, Alex, is that he was going to meet with a member of my board to hand off an operational zero point energy device. We can get into this another time, but it basically pulls energy out of the space around us that would run your house and business or factory with no pollution, zero energy costs, et cetera. It, this is not an urban myth. It, 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 it like taps into the dark energy, right? Or, or the, uh, yeah, well, it's actually called the zero point energy field, dark which matter, is the though. Basic energy field that all of matter and space and time is fluxing in and out of. So that is a quantified amount. In fact, well, that's in what my dad home, told me when I was a kid. He said, I know people in the government, we can put power plants right in the ground and pull power. Correct. It doesn't have to be in the sun. You don't need solar panels, wind, any of it. Now, these technologies, you know, let's call about, talk about free market. How do you have a free market if the most important discoveries in the last hundred years are being denied to the public? Uh, this is this is absolute totalitarian nonsense. But that's what we've run up against. So when when the CIA director was going to hand this off to my team that week, they found him fo floating down the Potomac River, made it look like a canoeing accident. His and, son. And, and by the way, I'm not doubting you, Stephen. This makes perfect sense. What's the weird logic, though? You're left alive. He's killed because you were never actually part of the club. It's like once you sign on, then they can kill you. But if you never join them, then you have this metaphysical protection. Yeah, I've had a couple of near-death experiences with this, and, and I have other people on my team who have as well. Uh, all I'm saying is that— That's what I'm saying is what protected you? What protected in, you? In the knowledge of God, why I'm still alive, I will say that there are um, people in classified projects who want us to try to get this job done who have had our back since 1998. So initially— That's key. So there's not just bad guys in this whole thing. No, there are some really, really heroic white hats. And uh, frankly, the upper echelons of a lot of the military folks I've worked with and briefed, they are victims of this cabal of sociopaths. And uh, can you imagine? Exactly. There's a shoehorned cabal in between the top and the bottom. Well, and, and they're, they actually are, 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 are sort of seated everywhere, but, but in a very compartmented way. So... You know, you will have one CIA director who may be read into these projects or briefed on them. Another one won't be. And people say, well, what's the difference? The difference is whether you're willing to go along with an absolute criminal and outrageous conspiracy or not. So uh, if you're a good guy, they're not going to tell you. It's like I told Lord Hill Norton, a five-star admiral, Sea Lord, who is uh, head of the Ministry of Defense in Great Britain. And I was at his home and he said, why would they never have told me, doctor, about this? I said, because if they told you, you wouldn't have gone along with the agenda, and then you would have been a problem for them, because they did a psychological workup on you and knew that you were a stand-up, patriotic, honest, God-fearing, good man. So if you're not someone who can be corrupted, and he wasn't, you're not, they're not going to tell you bumpkiss. Exactly. They'll even park you in a position of power so you think you're doing good so you don't challenge them. Well, and well, that's the other part of the Truman Show, as I call it, the movie that Jim Carrey was in that we all live in. And that is, you know, people think, oh, you become the president of the United States. You have an all access pass. Not quite. I mean, let's remember that it, it, it's not left or right here. Jimmy Carter ran on a campaign to get this information disclosed because he had seen one of these objects uh, when he was governor of Georgia. I have his actual report form about that, signed Jimmy Carter, governor of Georgia. And when he got to the White House, uh, got elected, the outgoing director of the CIA, George Bush Sr., told him, we're not going to tell you anything. You don't have a need to know. Go see if you can get it from the Congressional Research Service. And that actually happened to an incoming president of the United States. The same thing happened to Bill Clinton. George W. Bush, baby Bush, uh, was actually betrayed, unfortunately, by Cheney about this. And Cheney was on the committee dealing with this issue, but George W. Bush was never read into it properly. And well, on who and on. knows then? Who's the priesthood? I mean, how do they get access to it? The priesthood, you actually come up through the system often. Some of it is lineage and family, 
A lot of it is, is they test you out. They will give you a little bit of information and see if you will stay inside your compartment and not violate the secrecy. If you step a nanometer out, you're done, you're finished. And so it's a process, it's an iterative process of recruitment. Now, just to clarify, I have never worked for a covert program. I'm a private citizen that has run a public interest group to penetrate those programs. So we're, we actually are the biggest whistleblower group in the world on unacknowledged special access projects. But I have actually never worked for the government or for any of these covert programs. And again, there's not just the, the, these governmental projects, there's other private projects as well. Wow. well those, that's where the, action is. the big action is actually in the in the private money sector. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about who runs a show with Dr. Stephen Greer straight ahead. Stay with us. Well, I've been aware of Dr. Stephen Greer for 20 plus years, listened to him many times, and he always came off as credible, but talking to him in person, it, you know, it just makes a lot of sense. And again, Alex Jones here back live for joining us. We're on a planet in the middle of space. We have all these dimensions above and below us and we sit here and we, we let the system tell us what to believe. And boy, do they wanna keep us here. But it's like staying in your front yard. There's a whole world outside of that. And we should have a discussion about that. And the people running things, they don't want us to think outside that box. So we've got a little 10 minute segment here and a five minute segment and then you've gotta go. And we've got Paul Joseph Watson taking over. but. I guess if we transcend the establishment and realize there's a bigger universe, they're not so big anymore. Is that fundamentally, why isn't the establishment truthful with us? Because if we admit there's a big giant universe and God's got all these creations, that ends racism, it looks like. That ends all the petty crap. It seems like it makes us transcend, doesn't it? Yes, it does, but it also uh, empowers both the individual and each local community because what happens when, when that occurs? We become at once uh, a functional world, which is a good thing. I mean, at that end of, of being a global civilization, it, it can be good. But you have then cut the ties for the dependency on a large uh, transcendent national security state, but also an international order where what I call the petrol. Well, sir, let's be clear, an independent global system, not an artificial global system. Yes, an independent one. And and where, I mean, literally with the technologies that have been suppressed, that are energy and propulsion systems, every single home and farm and business would be completely self-sufficient. Well, that's not a good thing if you're at the top of the heap of the pyramid uh, in this 0.00001% of the uber global elite. So and they're particular. battling to, to stop the metamorphosis. They, they're trying to maintain control. It's all about global control. And the biggest thing that we haven't talked about that's in this documentary, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, about two thirds of the film is about the power of the human spirit and consciousness. L let's talk about what really scares them. Get into the film. Well, th this is what I'm gonna talk about now as some people say this doesn't sound like hard science for a doctor to be talking about, but it turns out that humans and every single human like a hologram folded within us, has the totality of the conscious creation within us. And so that's that the seed of the universe that, that Gandhi talked about. Precisely. Or uh, the great spirit of Native Americans or the beatific state that the early Christians spoke about in that state of enlightenment. This is a universal experience. And what's interesting is that every single conscious being, both on Earth and elsewhere, have the ability to connect to that, the greatness of the all, let's call it, that the sort of the God factor. And, you know, I was, I was raised, frankly, an atheist, but when I was 17, I died, had a near-death experience, and boy, did I find out I was wrong. Um, and it, it opened up an entire understanding of who and what we are and what the human potential is. But here's the, here's the zinger. There's studies in, uh, let, let's just take a moment to talk about science. There's studies in science dealing with what is called quantum mechanics, where they have found that if you uh, cool a container of helium down to absolute zero, just before uh, you, when you get that, about 1% of the helium atoms become coherent and aligned. At that 1% point, 
the entire container transforms. So it takes, it turns out it takes 1% of humans also who are in a state of consciousness and intent and higher consciousness. It's that enzyme point of that hundredth monkey. Yeah, and it changes to whole 99%, which means that if, if all of your listeners understood how powerful each individual was, but also coming together in coherence and in sort of an intent to change the current system and the current state of the world to one that's functional and enlightened, but also peaceful and that is... So that's what threatens the system is that we're individuals, but we choose to become collective in our own will. That's power. You're giving... Well, people are giving up their power to the high priests of whether it's government or priests or whoever. And, and we have lost touch with the power that we have within ourselves. So I think that each individual finding that, but then coming together to make a change, they've done studies in, uh, at Princeton at, at the engineering uh, uh, school where uh, Dr. John had people putting their awareness on random number generators, which just spit out random zeros and ones on a quantum computer basis. And if, if the person intended to move that generator towards more zeros, it would shift. I was but about to say, I saw a study 10 years ago where looking through telescopes, that it affects what they're visually seeing, even with an electron scanner, what your intent is. Like looking at something at a distance changes it. What is that? Yeah. Yes, it's because the mind, whereby you and I are conscious, is actually a singularity. It's like Erwin Schrodinger, the, the father of modern quantum mechanics said, the total number of minds in the cosmos in the entire universe is one. It's a singularity. So it's like a, it's that, a God machine. We're not God, but we're almost a vision of God. And it's literally true. Like we're made the image of God. Yeah. What we envision, the universe can't stop. We're it must. Yes, we're absolutely made in the image of God. But see, that knowledge is also something they don't want to recognize. And, you know, I'm a scientist, but there, there's this force that happens where you have to deny anything that has to do with the true spiritual nature of not only yourself, but the world. And because of that, we get into this reductionist paradigm where everything's just in little separate pieces. And by separating, they can then dominate and control. So there's an enormous power that we have. And you know, the whole last two thirds of Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind is about the science of consciousness and how to transform the current situation into what this ET told Colonel uh, Corso a new world if you can take it. So, you know, we have been trying to emerge into an advanced civilization for decades, but it keeps getting stopped by people who want all of us to be dependent on uh, the, the big state and big institutions rather than in, in creating a world of, uh, which, I mean, this world could be a, a paradise. So it's really a consciousness but shift. It's a huge consciousness shift that's happening now and it's coming. And we're right at that tipping point. You know, I, I told you the story about the, the, the super fluidity in helium, where you get 1% of the molecules and it shifts. Right before it shifts, everything's chaotic. Everything's so so again, that's why they want us in fear. That's why they want us hating each other and saying, don't shake hands, don't come well, together. It's, it's so goes, satanic. Fear is, fear, yes, fear is the mind killer and the spirit killer. If the, you can't have much love and generosity of heart if you're coward in fear. And that's that's the, the, the card they played on 9-11. It's the card they're playing now. That's why they, they push the race war. All of it is to make us separate. Well, they want people to, they need to have people in conflict so that they can control the people. You know, this is the demagogues and leaders, if you go all the way back through human history, have learned how to sort of divide and conquer uh, different populations. And that's it. And they want us to not know there's unlimited resources a second away. That's why they want to make us poor. So we're always scared of resources and worried about the other person. When like we hit the next level, we already see it. It's unlimited resources. Exactly. You know, everyone wonders why this uh, con uh, conservative Republican uh, president named a uh, uh, five-star general Eisenhower said on his last speech to the nation as he left office, beware the military industrial complex. He wasn't talking about his brethren in the military. Rank no, he said file. a technological elite in control of it. Correct. And that's what we're talking. And see, people don't realize that Eisenhower, on his watch, lost control 
of the technology transfer issue around ET spacecraft. They circled the wagons and cut him out because he was wanting to do what you and I are talking about. By the way, about. come back and do five more minutes to talk about that and come back next week. We really love you, Dr. Greer, because I saw him in that 21-minute speech. I have the yes. HD of it. He, they, they drop a book, he gets scared. He was saying something so revolutionary because they took control yes. from him at that point. We'll come back in two minutes with you. And by I the do. way, folks, I love you to death. We sell things that you need. But quite frankly, if you don't support us, we won't be here. They're, they're after us. They want to shut down because they know we're real. Um, you, you need our water filtration. You need the air filtration. It's all the best units you're going to get for the best price. We have the storable foods to be prepared. We have the fish oil. We, you know, we have all of it. We have a big sale that's going to end in about seven days, six days. Infowarstore.com. And I want to thank you for keeping us on air this long. You know, I know there's a God in heaven. We wouldn't have been able to go through this without you, but... They are definitely breathing down our necks, and uh, we need your financial support. So InfoWarsStore.com, get the products, get the videos, get the films, get the get the T-shirts. All of it funds the operation, but take advantage of that sale before it ends. And then go to DrStephenGreer.com. You can also find his new film, Close Encounters, the fifth time, fifth time. We'll come back and do five more minutes with him finishing up, and then Paul Joseph Watson from the U.K. is ready to take over, and then the war room with Owen Shore. We'll be right back in two minutes. All right, Dr. Stephen Greer with his new film, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, is here. In the last five minutes, your new film, what it gets into, where the planet is right now, what the people should know. We really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Well, what it really is, is a tour de force through where we are and what these unacknowledged super secret projects are doing, as well as, as their plan to hoax a, an alien threat, which is frankly non-existent to what is the solution? And we started talking about this in the last segment, is the solution is actually, uh, luckily, folded within every single human, uh, if we would realize what it is that we are. And so, you know, the film takes people on a journey. Uh, I started an organization 30 years ago where we go out and make contact with these civilizations using some admittedly controversial uh, protocols and experimental techniques, one of which involves the use of the conscious mind interacting with the communication systems on these ET craft. We haven't talked about this yet, but here's a hint. There's a man named Elon Musk who has a company called Neuralink, and he's trying to develop a technology so you can think to your computer and turn it on. Well, I got news for uh, Mr. Musk. We have uh, those technologies, 10,000 generations more developed on these ET craft that interface with directed conscious thought. Now, it, it's not hard to do it. You can sit, meditate, become centered and quiet, do a prayer, and then see where they are in your mind. The CIA had a program called Remote Viewing, and one of the people in that program is on the film, Dr. Russell Targ, who's a PhD laser physicist. And he worked for 23 years with the CIA doing this. So we go through a whole journey where we teach people that you can make this contact. And we also have an app that just came out. It's called CE5 Contact App. That's an entire training course for people in meditation, remote viewing, contact, and what the techniques are that are being used to make contact. Because I tell people, uh, I'm an empiricist as a doctor. Don't take my word for it. Go out there and see for yourself. And well, let's I be clear. The globalists and deep staters, you go to Skull and Bones, they say they're communicating with, quote, gods and goddesses. So they're all obsessed with this. That's what they're doing. They're getting their divine. Yeah, they're doing it in a way that, well, see, what we're saying is that every single human being can unlock that capability. No, but what I'm asking you, and you'll come back next time, who are the bad guys and good guys? I know you say advanced species, they're all good, but there's obviously some evil impetus driving these people or are you saying that's who we are? Sure. But they, yeah, those, well, humans and there are some other, uh, let's call them interdimensional beings that are extremely troublesome. Um, I'm talking about extraterrestrial biological life forms. Those are not. But I think they've been mixed together under the term alien. So alien has come to mean everything that people don't really understand. I'm just sort of joking. But, uh, so, but the, the folks that are really troublesome are people who have enormous power. And by the way, if you've only got $100 billion, it doesn't register for this crowd. Uh, I, I, you know, As much as people like to pile on to the billionaire class, 
I'm sure, it's all about, about institutional power and who, how many people you can kill. Who, who controls that? So that's where I get into the, the Majority Intelligence Committee, M-A-J-I-C. It's pronounced MAGIC, ironically, uh, or not ironically. And that is a blend of both corporate and government programs. And I've met with a number of them uh, who, are, who are involved at that level. Uh, you know, And some of them are folks you would never expect, like Prince Hans Adam von Liechtenstein, the crown prince of Liechtenstein and the banking empire there, um, all kinds of unusual characters. And, and, and they all have this agenda to want to control the world through one calamity after another. And the big one they've been planning is to hoax sort of an alien threat from outer space. And, uh, you know, I hope we won't be fooled again like we were on 9-11. Uh, unfortunately, the way we're responding to this COVID outbreak where we're destroying our entire civilization when we should be doing it smartly. I mean, in this sort of in, in a way that's Great measured. point. Dr. Stephen Greer, thanks for the time. Join us again soon. Amazing. Thank you so much. Paul Joseph thanks. Watson takes over in 60 seconds. I'm cutting this ad on May 10th, 2020. And within a week or so, many of the best-selling items that we're selling at InfoWarsStore.com will no longer be at 50% off. In fact, last year I said I can't do 50% off anymore because our markup just isn't enough for us to be able to get enough profit to operate this operation. But I want you to get the ultimate krill oil. I want you to get Vaso Beats. I want you to get DNA Force Plus. I want you to experience X2. I want you to get Real Red Pill and Real Red Pill Plus. They're all in stock right now, and they're 30 to 60% off. More than 20 items are 50% off right now, but we're going to have to end the sale on most items in about a week because a lot of the products are getting close to selling out like Real Red Pill, Real Red Pill Plus, and Vaso Beats. So take action, be healthier, boost your body's natural defenses, and fund the InfoWar. Getting these great products at InfoWarStore.com. I don't have to tell you that we are in the most important point in human history. The globalists have taken the gloves off and they've taken the mask off. And they're like, yeah, you're taking implantable chips. Yeah, we're into pedophilia. Yeah, we're into world government. Yeah, you're obsolete. You are non-essential. We are shutting your ass down. Yeah, we told you don't be farmers and don't be ranchers and don't work in industry anymore. You're gonna be the service economy. And now the globalists are telling you that there's no more service economy and you're obsolete. So you better bow down to them and get your universal pittance income so they can dictate your life. The handcuffs are going on right now. We have to resist and say no to the new world order. And that takes you understanding you were right and understanding I was right and getting in people's faces and raising the alarm now while you still can. Now is the time for action. Now is the time for you to shine and be the Paul Revere's you know you are. It's now more critical than ever to keep InfoWars on the air. Everything we warned of for decades is now emerged. It was always there, but now it's uncloaked. It's out in the open. And our credibility, your credibility, has gone to the stars. That's why they want to expunge and erase every documentary, every film, every article, every report, every interview. That's why they don't want to just silence InfoWars. They want to silence medical doctors and scientists and members of Congress and leaders who tell the truth. But humanity is rallying against this threat. And now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time to spread the word like never before. I know I get up here and I say, you are the Paul Revere's. But you know what? The evil we're facing is much more wicked and much more diabolical than King George III 260 years ago. These globalists want to dominate 
and take control of our very genetic code. They want to sterilize us. They want to erase us. They want to destroy our seed. They want hegemonic domination over every life form on the planet. They want to override it in their selfishness. And we can't let them do that. So I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, however you can, realize you're a leader. Listening to local radio stations, watching local TV stations, going to newswars.com, going to man.video, and finding the articles and the videos that you think are most important and most informative, and sharing those at the grocery store and at church and to your neighbors and to your friends and saying, hey, here's what's banned. Here's what they don't want you to know about. That's changing the world, and that brings hope into the world. And people that weren't ready to wake up years ago, they're ready to wake up now. That's why the globalists wanted to shut us down all these years. That's why they wanted to silence us all these years. Because they knew that once their system emerged, we would have massive credibility. And so they hope people forget about what we said. They hope they forget about all the warnings. But people aren't forgetting. People are remembering. And remember what Jonathan Gruber said six years ago about Obamacare, who he wrote Obamacare. He said, Obama chose me because I came up with the best plan to triple prices and rip everyone off, and I was the most deceptive person. And he said, thank God they don't have memories. Thank God they're so stupid. But you do have memories for baseball or movies or things you like. Well, start focusing on politics and the world and the globalists, not because you like them, but because you want to defeat them and remember what they've done and expose them and celebrate exposing them and celebrate the First Amendment and the free speech that veterans fought and died to defend. Because those veterans and our forebears didn't create those rights, but they fought and bled to enshrine them and to get them openly practiced so that they would become part of our culture and so that freedom would not pass from the world and so that we would not be slaves. So I tell you again, exercise these freedoms or lose them forever and tell everyone you know about the fight for freedom that goes on here, now more important than ever, at InfoWars. We're gonna be true until the end. I'm not gonna back down, I'm not gonna compromise, and I'm asking you not to back down or compromise because compromising with this, submitting to this is worse than living death.